Welcome. This is The Art of Poetry. I'm Frank Crowley, and my co-host and co-producer, Gemma Mathewson, is back. Hello. Through the magic <laughs> of, isn't it wonderful? It's yeah. really a celebration. We're here, Gem and I both, to celebrate spring, fresh flowers, St. Patrick's Day, ah, International Women's Day, and all of the glories of the art world that you see and that we'll share with you. It's really a show the first of two, on poetry of women. So um, it's Women's Herstory Month, and some of that will come out. Uh, but um, don't hold us to any bookends here, <laughs> because we're <laughs> going to roam and range. So, oh, yeah. welcome, Gemma. It's so well, good you, to see you. It's great to be here. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, you're loud and clear, and we can hear your first poem. Um, All right. Celebrating, as we say, herstory, Women's International Day. And it's all year round, because it's all good, as you say so well. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to just dive right in with uh, Nikki Giovanni, one of our um, women's poets, African-American. And um, I'm going to read a very short poem and then a little bit longer. And the, the themes, I think, are both very important. Not just, you know, two women, definitely. And um, humanity, of course. Yeah. The first one is called Mercy. She asked me to kill the spider. Instead, I got the most peaceful weapons I can find. I take a cup and a napkin. I catch the spider, put it outside, and allow it to walk away. If I am ever caught in the wrong place, at the wrong place, just being alive and not bothering anyone, I hope I am greeted with the same kind of mercy. That's the first poem. And um, something when I was a nursery school teacher that I always modeled for children was catching the little creatures and putting them back outside, uh, which is just the beginning of the concept of how everyone belongs and um, everyone's life is worthwhile. And along that theme, if your life is worthwhile, your voice is worthwhile. Nikki Giovanni, vote. It's not a hug nor a mistletoe at Christmas. It's not a colored Easter egg at Easter, nor a bunny hopping across the meadow. It's a vote saying, you are a citizen. Though it sometimes is chocolate or sometimes vanilla, it can be a female or a male. It is right or left. I can agree or disagree, but, and this is important, but I am a citizen. I should be able to vote from prison. I should be able to vote from the battlefield. I should be able to vote when I get a driver's license. I should be able to vote if I can purchase a gun. I must be able to vote if I am in the hospital if I am in the old folks' home, if I am needing a ride to the polling place, I am a citizen. I must be able to vote. Folks were lynched. Folks were shot. Folks' communities were gerrymandered. Folks who believed in the Constitution were lied to, burned out, bought and sold, because they agreed all men were created equal Folks vote to make us free. It's not cookies nor cake, but it is the icing that is so sweet. Good for the folks. Good for us. 
That's a couple for Nikki Giovanni. I'll leave another one of hers for now. I really love the way you read, Gemma. <laughs> I had forgotten with such pacing and feeling and credibility. I think you did that one justice. And so let's celebrate the right to vote today. That's a great theme too. And it is a celebration. Mm -hmm. Hard fought, hard won. I'm going to um, go back, I think, to one of her feisty forebears. All right. Maybe not a direct mentoring relationship. Maybe not at all. But I'll tell you, Adrian Rich um, scratches uh, the surface on so many things. I'm going to start with a short one, peeling onions. Okay. Only to have a grief equal to all these tears. There's not a sob in my chest. Dry-hearted as pure gint. I pare away, no hero, merely a cook. Crying was labor. Once when I'd good cause, Oh, walking, I felt my eyes like wounds raw in my head. So postal clerks, I thought, must stare. A dog's look, a cat's, burnt to my brain, yet all that stayed stuffed in my lungs like smog. These old tears in the chopping bowl. What a parallel, what an analogy. Yeah. What a release um, through something as simple as peeling onions. That's what poets do for me, bring everyday life to a more vibrant level. Um, mm -hmm. She touches my soul and I didn't realize how deeply until I revisited her again. Planetarium. Um, it's a little longer, but it's so interesting in terms of the relationships between men and women and um, equity. This is an equity poem. Planetarium. Uh, epigraph, thinking of Carolyn Herschel, 1750 to 1848, astronomer, sister of William and others. A woman in the shape of a monster, a monster in the shape of a woman. The skies are full of them, a woman in the snow among the clocks and instruments or measuring the ground with poles in her 98 years to discover eight comets to whom the moon ruled like us, levitating into the night sky, riding the polished lenses. Galaxies of women, they're doing penance for impetuousness, ribs chilled in those spaces of the mind. And I, virile, precise, and absolutely certain from the mad webs of Uranusburg, encountering the Nova, every impulse of light exploding from the core as life flies out of us. Tycho whispering at last, quote, let me not seem to have lived in vain, end quote. What we see, we see, and seeing is changing. The light that shrivels a mountain and leaves a man alive. Heartbeat of the pulsar, heart sweating through my body, the radio impulse pouring in from Taurus. I am bombarded yet. I stand. I have been standing all my life in the direct path of a battery of signals, the most accurately transmitted, most untranslatable language in the universe. I am a galactic cloud so deep, so involuted that a light wave could take 15 years to travel through me. And has taken. I am an instrument in the shape of a woman trying to translate pulsations into images for the relief of the body and the reconstruction of the mind. 
Oh. Ah. She outpaced her brother. <laughs> ah. And uh, one of the Maybe. forerunners. Certainly uh, um, not getting the credit. Now I. <laughs> well, yeah. it's dancing backward in heels, you know, as the phrase that always comes to mind. Yeah. Um, wasn't going to go here next, but because <laughs> because that was an enormous, enormously beautiful uh, Science Friday kind of poem, I call them, when they bring in the whole, you know, <laughs> physics. And I'm going to go to one of my favorite poets, uh, contemporary poets, Sharon Olds. Oh, and, um, and because this is, again, themed about women, I, I like her poems about uh, motherhood and the, you know, the struggle to be a person and a mother and a wife and, uh, um, you know, the things, the things that um, maybe women poet writers think are maybe a little too mundane right about now. Uh -huh. But she handles them beautifully and thoughtfully and the way she writes. I agree. <laughs> and the first one is called Physics. Uh -huh. And it's about her daughter. Her first puzzle had three pieces. She'd take the last piece and turn it, lower it in like a sewer lid, flush with the street. The bases of the frames were like wooden fur, guard hair sticking out of the pelt. I'd set one on the floor and spread the pieces out around it. It made me groan to think of Red Riding Hood's hood, a single scarlet pointed piece. How long since I had seen her? Later, Panthers, 500 pieces, and an Annunciation, a thousand pieces. We would gaze on our elbows into its gaps. Now, she tells me that if I were sitting in a 20-foot barn with the doors opened on either end and a 50-foot ladder hurtled through the barn at the speed of light, there would be a moment after the last rung was inside the barn and before the first rung came out the other end, when the whole 50-foot ladder would be inside the 20-foot barn. And I believe her. I have thought her life was inside my life like that. When she reads the college catalogs, I look away and hum. I have not grown up yet. I have lived as my daughter's mother, the way I have lived as my mother's daughter inside her life. I have not yet been born. And if I, and if you don't mind just a little, another little one, because it's a complimentary one. And I love the, I love the image um, well, the conceit of Houdini, how she compares her sons and her relationship as like a, a trick that Houdini was famous for. I share Houdini's birthday, so. Ah. My son, the man. Suddenly his shoulders got a lot wider, the way Houdini would expand his body while people were putting him in chains. It seemed no time since I would help him put on his sleeper guiding his calves into the shadowy interior, zip him up and toss him up and catch his weight. I cannot imagine him no longer a child. I know I must get ready, get over my fear of men. Now my son is going to be one. That was not what I had in mind when he pressed up through me like a sealed trunk through the ice of the Hudson, <laughs> napped the padlock, unsnaked the chains, appeared in my arms. Now, he looks at me the way Houdini studied a box to learn the way out, then smiled and let himself be manacled. <laughs> I'm just in love with that poem. I'm Isn't it wonderful? It's oh. wow. <laughs> oh, not just the imagery, which is so creative, imaginative, but um, the emotions packed in the imagery. Oh, right. 
the honesty. I mean, as mothers, <clears throat> as mothers, the minute we give birth, we're we're realizing we have to let our children go. It's you know. And uh, what a meme! What a comparison! What a metaphor! What a what a, all of the figures. Oh, I'm so glad you unearthed that. That's marvelous. Because I have you shared... You about love, too, about everything. But those are the ones that spoke to me right now. Excuse and, me, I interrupted. And speaking to me, and in a way, that's such a segue, you know, the son. Because here's some of her take on the husband. It's um, the signature poem of her collection, Stag's Leap. Uh-huh. You yep. know that one? Yep. Ah, so we're doing a contratemps, a little dance here. It. It's working. It's working. Stag's leap. Then the drawing on the label of our favorite red wine looks like my husband casting himself off a cliff in his fervor to get free of me. His fur is rough and cozy, his face placid, tranced ruminant. The bow of each furculum reaches back to his haunches. Each time of it grows straight up and branches like a model of his brain, archaic, unwieldy. He bears its pony tray level as he soars from the precipice edge, dreamy. When anyone escapes, my heart leaps up. Even when it's I who am escaped from. I am half on the side of the lever. It's so quiet and empty when he's left. I feel like a landscape, a ground without a figure. Suave qui bent. Let those who can save themselves, save themselves. Once I saw a dry point of someone tiny being crucified on a fallow deer's antlers. I feel like his victim, and he seems my victim. I worry that the outstretched legs on the heart, H-A-R-T, are bent the wrong way as he throws himself off. Oh, my mate! I was vain of his faithfulness, as if it was a compliment rather than a state of partial sleep. And when I wrote about him, did he feel he had to walk around carrying my books on his head like a stack of posture volumes or the rack of horns hung where a hunter washes the venison down with the Sauvignon? Oh, leap, leap, careful of the rocks. Does the old vow have to wish him happiness in his new life, even sexual joy? I fear so at first when I still can't tell us apart. Below his shaggy belly in the distance lie the even dots of a vineyard, its vines not blasted, its roots clean, its bottles growing at the ends of their blowpipes as dark green wavering groans. Where has she been all my life? Uh, <laughs> wow. Stag's leap, I guess. Oh, yeah. that husband reduced to the beast he is and was. <laughs> yeah. So. I'm just going to jump in here with something that clicked when you read that. Good. Uh, yeah. Wendy Cope from Britain, oh. hilarious woman poet. Um, uh. <laughs> uh, my son turned me on to her, and I just, I, I love, I, I'll read something very short that just kind of goes in that vein. <laughs> Defining the problem. <laughs> I can't forgive you, even if I could. You wouldn't pardon me for seeing through you. And yet, I cannot cure myself of love for what I thought you were before I knew you. <laughs> so she has these little gems. I mean, some of them are a little longer, and I'll read some more later, but... Um, so yeah. how, how far... Love has 
How far, Gemma, have we come as a society? I'm glad you're bringing in the Brits, for sure. Um, progenitors all the way. But how far have we come? Um, let's do a, a little reconnaissance. Um, what's cooking in terms of equity issues? It seems to be on the front burner with the new administration. <laughs> Right. And well, you know, it's the vote. It's the gerrymandering. That stuff's still happening. Um, you know, I just, I don't know what to say. Well, how about the genders? Now, there, was, there was a poem that came up with that. Oh, so, so um, in answer to that question, there's, there's this, uh -huh. maybe. Or it's one answer or one way to look at it. Um. Uh, indigenous people have the greatest uh, stories. Their stories are, are history. Their stories are, are uh, prediction. Their stories are, are lessons in learning and life. And uh, Joe Harjo, uh, Joy, excuse me, Joy Harjo, who was the poet laureate uh, to, uh, 2019, uh -huh. um, she's from the Muscogee Creek Nation. She, uh, she wrote this, once the world was perfect. And it's a story, but it's definitely, um, a, hopefully, an answer to a question. Once the world was perfect and we were happy in that world, then we took it for granted. Discontent began a small rumble in the earthly mind. Then doubt pushed through with its spiked head. And once doubt ruptured the web, all manner of demon thoughts jumped through. We destroyed the world we had been given for inspiration, for life. Each stone of jealousy, each stone of fear, greed, envy, and hatred put out the light. No one was without a stone in his or her hand. There we were, right back where we started. We were bumping into each other in the dark. And now we have no place to live since we don't know how to live with each other. Then one of the stumbling ones took pity on another and shared a blanket, a spark a spark of kindness made a light. The light made an opening in the darkness. Everyone worked together to make a ladder. A wind clan person climbed out first into the next world. And then other clans and children of those clans, their children and their children, all the way through time to now into this morning light to you. Oh, I'm just, um, I'm just seeing uh, South Dakota all over again in the great sky, the, um, the Sundance, the, all the rituals when we mm -hmm. lived in South Dakota for eight years. Oh. And it's such a comprehensive vision of being in the universe. I love what you just read. And I have heard of her before, but now I want to, um, yeah, now I want to borrow that book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the libraries are open. Let's celebrate that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I've been stopping <laughs> at Clinton to pull out a few right here. You see them. Um but uh, that's so wonderful to bring that memory up. And then that image, a spark of kindness in that poem. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yeah, it's a blanket. And I love how that was the symbol of something you could give a blanket, some shelter for someone else, mm -hmm. some warmth for someone else. Um, you know, it's everybody has a stone whether your stone is fear or greed or envy or hatred, everybody's hitting everybody else. And then when they said, now we're all, you know, basically implying we're all homeless now because we don't know how to live with each other. I mean, that is just the, the 
best, <laughs> you know, analysis of what's happened. <laughs> I know. It brings up uh, a sort of ironic chuckle of what a mess we've made of things, and yet there's, there's still that spark of kindness and the blanket. And uh, you indelibly um, printed on my memory, as you say and describe it, you know, putting that spider under that little protective cup or glass. Who of us has not done that? And the ant in the bathroom in the old apartment, you know? <laughs> yeah, honestly. Yeah. But you did it for the little ones, which mm -hmm. is really the key. Um, my wife, Jane, is uh, in early childhood as a profession. So I watched some of this, and uh, it begins at a very early age. I'm so glad you were in that profession, <laughs> bringing yeah. up these these sparks of kindness that uh, flourish and maybe into a conflagration to continue that image, you know? Um, yeah, the perfect world. Uh, so many mythical images come from that. I like that kindness um, that echoes in Adrian Rich's short poem, which, um, which ends our first part of the show, Upper Broadway. The leaf bud struggles forth toward the frigid light of the air shaft, this in faith, this pale extension of a day when looking up, you know, something is changing, winter has turned. Through the wind, though the wind is colder, th three st streets away, a roof collapses onto people who thought they still had time. Time out of mind. I've written so many words wanting to live inside you to be of use to you. Now I must write for myself, for this blind woman scratching the pavement with her wand of thought. This slippered crone inching on icy streets reaching into wire trash baskets, pulling out what was thrown away and infinitely precious. I look at my hands and see they are still unfinished. I look at the vine and see the leaf bud inching toward life. I look at my face in the glass and see a half-born woman. Same imagery from olds, you know? Yeah. Half-born, unborn, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, Happy yeah. spring, though. We're turning a corner, as she says. <laughs> this is now our break. Uh, enjoy the service announcements, which um, are of equal quality. You'll well, enjoy good. them. <laughs> we'll be back. Yes, Gemma, thank you. Oh, that was good. Community TV. Your neighborhood TV. Publicly funded and a reliable partner for cable companies nationwide. It provides transparent coverage of local and state government, education, and public programming. A digital town green that can be watched anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Watch us on today's high-tech distribution methods. Community TV in Connecticut. Local. Unfiltered. Reliable. And, and yours. yours. Our fellow Americans. Right now, the COVID-19 vaccines are available to millions of Americans. And soon, they will be available to everyone. The science is clear. These vaccines will protect you and those you love from this dangerous and deadly disease. They could save your life. So we urge you to get vaccinated when it's available to you. That's the first step to ending the pandemic and moving our country forward. It's up to you. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. I'm here to talk about how we're gonna defeat COVID-19. Well, we gotta bring our A game. What's our A game? Here's the strategy. Get tested, stay social distancing, 
wear a mask. Community Health Center has testing sites all over the Connecticut, open seven days a week, and they're free for anybody, babies, students, senior citizens, Anybody. So go in and get tested. That's how we can all stay undefeated. Find a location near you at chc1.com. Smart TVs and streaming services have taken over the television industry. VSC TV is proud to announce our presence on Apple TV and Roku to make watching your favorite shows even easier. You can access this service by downloading the Cablecast ScreenWeave app. Then choose Valley Shore Community TV from the list of channels. Select VSC TV Live to watch our channel in full HD. Or pick a show from our on-demand video library. VSC TV is your local Connecticut Midshore Valley digital connection. Hmm. We're back. Second half of The Art of Poetry, a show on women poets celebrating International Women's Day, Herstory Month. Oh, how wonderful the first half. <laughs> and uh, let's continue the energy. Thanks, Gemma. I know. have Marianne Moore. But before, can you see this dream catch? Yeah, it is. I noticed it. You found that somewhere and put it right up front. Yeah, Great. It, was, it was actually hiding behind me on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I brought it with me today because... Um, I realize the connection between dreams and poetry in my own life. Gemma, you're a recognized poet yourself. You've <laughs> got uh, poems that live, <laughs> breathe, and um, celebrate, as well as recognize the sadness in our lives, our personal lives. So the personal touch is so um, valuable. Do you have a poem you can share with us, your own? Oh, my, one of my own poems? Gosh. Ah. Hey, I don't. I only have one memorized that it's not appropriate. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Hmm. You dare what? If you um, Want to read something yourself? Maybe I'll be able to figure something out along the way. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Okay. But we also have um, a second show on women poets yeah. in April. And, of course, hoping you're still um, free on whatever day we choose. It'll be wonderful to hear some more of your poems. But if you've got one today, that'd be grand. I've, thank you. I've got one today. It's... It's about passion, fire, you know, that's a, still, that's a thing that happens in womanhood sometimes. It's called Because of Fire. Because a fire was in my head, igniting was my waking aim. No room for doubt, regret, nor dread because a fire was in my head. Because a fire was in my blood, restlessness seared through my veins each night i built the past day's pyre to fuel the fire that was my blood because a fire was in my eyes stars reconfigured in the void constellations blazed my fate scribed from the fire within my eyes because a fire was in my breath i learned to sing the dragon's song Discordance scorched thoracic scales with fire bellowed from my breath. Because a fire was in my lips, I fanned the embers with a kiss. In sleepless vigil tended hearth from blistering fire inside my lips. Because a fire was in my heart, was passion suckled from my breast. 
as earth enriched with lava flow, desire the tender in my heart. Because a fire was in my hands, my mirror's touch reduced to ash, the ones I hungered to caress, the fire a Midas in my hands. Because a fire was in my loins, I grappled with the world in flames, then yielded molten inner core to stoke the fire in my loins. Because a fire was in my bones, incandescence bore me up, propelled me till I self-consumed by fire that guttered in my bones. Oh, that's a wow. <laughs> that's <laughs> Oh, that was... a perfect opener for the <laughs> second half of the show. Spring, <clears throat> excuse me, there's fire <laughs> is... everywhere waiting to explode in nature. It's just wonderful. Here comes the sun, right? <laughs> Here comes the sun. But um, your image of uh, past day's pyre, P-Y-R-E, Right. Is, is an image I just love because, you know, it's funeral pyre, it's um, past days pyre, which would be an accumulation of, well, you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's like, <clears throat> boy, can I learn to throw all of it on the, the pyre yep. and just burn it and then start fresh and happy in a new spring day and... Oh, this year of COVID, go away, go away. No, it's just so, so painful to think of all the people we've lost. Um, but um, winter in the spring, as you said so well earlier, and, you know, um, sadness into hope, um, injustice into justice, all these things burn hot in the human breast, don't they, you know, they in, unquenchably. Um, so you bring to mind my dearest, dearest love, Emily Dickinson. And may I say, you've got her look and her talent today. <laughs> you've, you've reincarnated. Oh, wonderful. Um, That's way too much praise. Oh, but it's so good. I mean, your rhyme you know, and your formalism in that poem. Um, but just the cadence and the rhythm, it just, it just um, evokes Emily for me. Um, after great pain, a formal feeling comes. After great pain, a formal feeling comes. The nerves sit ceremonious like tombs. The stiff heart questions, was it he, capital H, that bore, and yesterday, or centuries before, the feet mechanical go round of ground or air or aught, a wooden way regardless grown, a court's contentment like a stone. This is the hour of lead, remembered if outlived as freezing persons recollect the snow. First, chill, then stupor, then letting go. Well, that's the old year. Yeah, that's the old year. Oh. If you don't mind, I'd like to um, round out the old year with um, <clears throat> a, a poem that also talks about the, the letting go and the, uh. the old year. And uh, it's a poem that has that has gotten a lot of notice recently for obvious reasons it's a poem by Evan boland which is not new she she recently uh passed away i think but she's my favorite irish poet and a woman poet and um i heard her speak at yale i had no idea who she was and you know just had to know everything all at once but this poem is called quarantine <clears throat> it's Hope I can get through it. In the worst hour of the worst season, of the worst year of a whole people, a man set out from the workhouse with his wife. He was walking. They were both walking north. 
She was sick with famine fever and could not keep up. He lifted her and put her on his back. He walked like that, west and west and north, until at nightfall, under freezing stars, they arrived. In the morning, they were both found dead of cold, of hunger, of the toxins, of a whole history. But her feet were held against his breastbone. The last heat of his flesh was his last gift to her. Let no love poem ever come to this threshold. There is no place here for the inexact praise of easy graces and sensuality of the body. There is only time for this merciless inventory. Their death together in the winter of 1847, mm. also what they suffered, also how they lived, and what there is between a man and a woman, and in which darkness it can best be proved. I'm um, speechless and wordless after that. It, and it's, you know, it, it's when you think of all the people this year mm -hmm. who, who proved in so many ways their love for each other. Uh -huh. You think about the woman's little feet against his chest and just sharing their last warmth or oh. he sh with her. It's an image I'm sure you'll never forget now, you know. It's an image that um, <clears throat> brings up, too, um, that play I saw at the Abbey Theater in Dublin called Famine. Mm -hmm. um, and this is 1993 when I was over there, uh, part of a sabbatical. And uh, that, that scene was actually uh, reenacted on stage, but um, with a twist. It was um, the strangest ending to the play that at the very last moment of life with a family dying in the last stages of starvation, um, the husband, uh, in, in a sense, doing the same gesture to his wife, um, and then everyone letting go. Mm -hmm. uh, it also evokes such a beautiful, tender image of people holding their hands on the cold glass outside nursing homes mm -hmm. that we have seen countless times. Sure. Um, and yet, you know, it gives me chills to think that, you know, even after that, Spring follows winter, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. There's the buds again. I'm seeing daffodils around oh. the bank in Guilford. It's just like, whoa, but how do you let go? I guess your past day's pyre is a good way. Um, also, rituals of whatever we can do for ourselves, walk the beach visit the library for a poetry book because really in the last analysis what do we turn to for consolation and solace mm -hmm. poetry the soul's food well thank you christy we're down to 10 minutes and um gemma make sure you get whatever you want in for today, but then there's the end of April, which is National <laughs> Poetry Month. Sure. sure. Well, you're always supposed to have a little bit more something than, you know, <laughs> that you can use. Uh -huh. so, uh, so go ahead. Um, my life had stood a loaded gun. Emily, again, um, who seems to capture in, uh, in two stanzas. A truth of life. My life had stood a loaded gun in corners till a day the owner passed, identified, and carried me away. 
And now we roam in sovereign woods, and now we hunt the doe. And every time I speak for him, the mountains straight reply. And do I smile at such cordial light upon the valley glow? It is as a Vesuvian face had let its pleasures through. And when at night, our good day done, I guard my master's head, tis better than the eider duck's deep pillow to have shared. To foe of his, I'm deadly foe. None stir the second time on whom I lay a yellow eye or an emphatic thumb. Though I than he may longer live, he longer must than I, for I have but the power to kill without the power to die. Oh, Emily, oh, yeah. what are you doing in the 19th century? <laughs> You're so <Yeah>. contemporary. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Can I can I um give you an Emily for an Emily? Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. You can never, never, ever not <laughs> read to the Emily. What is it about her? Oh, oh. Everything. Everything. I died for beauty, but was oh. scarce adjusted to the tomb. Yeah. One one who died for truth was lain in an adjoining room. Adjoining room. He questioned softly why I failed. For beauty, I replied, and I for truth. The two are one, we brethren are, he said. And so, as kinsmen met at night, we talked between the rooms until the moss had reached our lips and covered up our names. <laughs> Who imagines that she's a gun, <laughs> that she's um, like that book, um, notebook for the recently departed. <laughs> uh, right, right. Right. Um, it's the poet's creative imagination, truly uh, the signal greatest gift humankind has, creative imagination to live, to come out of the... Uh, quarantine to come out of a year of death and sorrow and sadness. So um, I think uh, we need some dancing in April <laughs> just to kind of dispel <laughs> the power. I have, a, I have a few happy poems for, for you know, for springtime in April. Um, oh, great. That I don't have on hand. <laughs> no, no. And I, I was consumed with, um, you know, as you say, past day's pyre, this, this session. But uh, maybe a segue to April would be Marianne Moore. Did okay. I share a poem um, and send you a copy? Uh, you did, but I don't know if I have it. That's quite all right. Ready to hand. Yeah, why don't you, oh, is it um, the fish? Yeah. See, Elizabeth Bishop wrote famously a poem oh, called know. The Fish, but I happened to be scanning through Marianne Moore, and I said, oh, this is Marianne Moore's version. Let's see if it's um, <clears throat> a little more sanguine, <clears throat> a little more playful. <laughs> I really didn't understand this poem very well, mm -hmm. but, you know, thank goodness for the internet. I had, you know, dozens of professors trying to explain it to me on their podcasts. Wow. Um, I don't know if I can do it justice to read it, but I'll try. Oh, um, so, but the thing to remember is it's like the tide. Things come in, things go out, things go, you know, the, the rhythm of life. So wow. it's what you're talking about, the <clears throat> death and life. Um, and her beautiful language. I don't know if you can see this, but the poem has a, oops, no, I'm going the wrong way. The poem has a, a shape to it. Yes, yes. That's like, that, that's like the curling of the waves, too. So. Thank you. We see that. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> the fish. Wade through black jade of the crow blue mussel shells, one keeps adjusting the ash heaps opening and shutting itself like an injured fan. 
The barnacles, which encrust the side of the wave, cannot hide there, for the submerged shafts of the sun, split like spun glass, move themselves with spotlight swiftness into the crevices, in and out, illuminating the turquoise sea of bodies. The water drives a wedge of iron through the iron edge of the cliff, whereupon the stars, pink rice grains, ink bespattered, bespattered jellyfish, crabs like green lilies, and submarine toadstools slide each on the other. All external marks of abuse are present in this defiant edifice. All the physical features of accident, lack of cornice, dynamite grooves, burns, and hatchet strokes, these things stand out on it. The chasm side is dead, repeated. Evidence has proved that it can live on what cannot revive its youth. The sea grows old in it. Oh. The sea grows old in change, the change of the things weaving in and out, the mm. things that leave their marks and are ephemeral, like the broken fan half opening. It's, you know... It's a lot of things I still don't understand in this poem, but it, it's definitely worth a few more reads. And the stunning imagery calls me to um, read that uh, two, three, four times because each image is so crystalline in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and, she... and, the, and the choppiness of the way I read it, which may have had a few errors in it, but it's also because it's it's got... Um, syllables sometimes that go from line to line because she wants you to feel the choppiness of the waves and the, <laughs> how things hang on the top and then dive under. But the sun split like spun glass themselves, the spotlight swiftness in the crevices. Wow, that's a lot <laughs> yeah. of hissing. The hissing of that foam, you can hear it. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you, um, you got some coaching on that one. <laughs> I would need a lot more. Oh my goodness! I'm uh, glad. I'm glad you gave me the, you know. Yeah. Oh, of hey, check this out. You know. Well, we're down to two minutes. So, um, uh, what's your? Uh, I'm Emily. What's your? One more Emily? Uh, no. What's your summary feeling of today's oh. selections? Well. Women are awesome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. They have, as my granddaughter used to say, they have quite a range of um, uh, viewpoints mm -hmm. and convictions and emotions and um, uh, concerns about and projects and hope for the world. That's one thing. Um, another thing is we've been through a lot. What about you? I feel um, I feel a person kind of sums that up. Uh, ah. Her name is Frida, and um, I like the play on freedom, Frida. Oh, Frida Kahlo. Um, I think I'll bring in uh, that big picture of her for next time because. The Earth Mother really wraps it up um, in so many ways. Nurturer, um, fire of passion, uh, 20 seconds, 19 seconds. <laughs> My summary is, oh, Frida, yeah. yeah. From sadness to triumph, you know, and joy mm -hmm. and celebration. So... And endurance. Oh, my goodness. The key word. Yeah. Persistence, endurance, and creative imagination. Oh, yeah. That's the soul of life. I loved your, um, your poem about the fire of passion. You know, um, I will get to, we'll get to that. Yeah. 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 
Here we are, it's a wrap. Um, I just loved summing it up with you too. Um, yeah, you've been today uh, Marianne Moore <laughs> for me <laughs> and good old Emily. And geez, that's great. I appreciate it, Gemma. And look forward to April. Hope you're free. Oh, definitely. We'll do April. We're on. We'll get, we'll get some more good women poets and tap the sky, you know. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Thank you yep. for that summary. Um, I feel great. Bye. Bye.